The universe travels the path of entropy. The only way forward is chaos. What is up YouTube and welcome to the second episode of the Chaos Phenom Setup Series. The IPA arrived. After all that waiting for the post, it finally arrived. I could not be happier with the results. It's just been an incredible journey and it's not done yet. There's still so much more to do. Let's go over the methods that I use to get a perfect print first time, first try, no problems, no issues. And it's not as difficult as you might think. It just, just requires just a, just a little bit of OCD. Just a little bit. And I've discovered that it, it follows a very, very simple set of rules to follow. Five simple steps. And because it's a phenom printer and we're doing printing, all the steps start with the letter P. Prep, pour, print, pull, process. That's it. So let's go through each one of those stages one by one. And I will give you guys the rundown as we go through each one. Let's get into it. Right. So the, the key to absolute success with resin printing is all about prep and maintaining certain standards so safety is number one gloves eye protection because i wear glasses i've got these sort of covers that i wear and they're also uv protection glasses and finally the other thing you want is a respirator it's not so much the resin chemical smells on the, the fumes from the resins that is bad but it's the fumes from all the alcohol and working with the alcohol that's bad for you so the next thing is cleaning so to see success, you need cleanliness. You have to be methodical about everything. You can't, like I said, you can't slack off. And another good tip is to be patient. Don't rush into things. Make sure you go through all your steps correctly. The more committed you are to following these steps every single time, the more success you're gonna have. So I cleaned the vat in the previous episode, but I'm just doing it again now that my IPA has arrived and I can get nice clean surfaces. And uh, reinstalling the bill plate. And just a quick side note on something I forgot in the previous episode leave that magnetic plate for 72 hours after installing now this this bit's really important you you really need to shake these bottles up after you receive them you don't know how long they've been sitting on a shelf so good give them a good shake
So just like with the very first step with the prep, um, you want to prep before you do your pull. Make sure you've got all your tools and everything on hand, ready to go. Well, glove on one hand, other hand, no glove. This is to, to help segregate the different items and tools and stuff that you use. Stuff that's covered in resin, you treat as contaminated, so you use as the glove. Stuff that you don't want resin getting onto, stuff that you're going to touch regularly with your hands, use your ungloved hand. Um, this will help train you to keep these things separate and work in a certain way that you don't end up with resin just getting everywhere. So it's like there, touching the door, no glove. And now we get on to what's potentially the messiest step of the whole thing, um, and that's processing. So this is where you have to remove the parts from your build plate, clean them, clean your build plate, get everything reset for another print, um, and then processing the parts in the alcohol in order to get them ready for curing. I'm just using glove on one hand, no glove on the other hand. This is again, keeping the different tools separate, like a spatula, I want to be able to hold that with my hand and put it down, but I'm putting it back in the tub with all the contaminated resin so that it's not getting everywhere else. Cleaning the build plate, getting it out of the way, cleaning my hands, so now that I can touch stuff, I'll put another glove on. This is where I'm going to start now working with the parts themselves, so I'm not too worried about touching stuff that I don't want to be contaminated because the build plate is out of the way. So now it's good practice that as you go through each step, um, you clean up as you go. So here I'm now cleaning up this tray. This is where I keep my build plates when I'm not using them. So they're just giving it a spray and letting it rinse out into the wash tub. Give it a wipe out and then I can put my build plate away and give it a final clean, make sure it's absolutely spotless. Cleaning the other side and then I'll close that up and put it away out of the way. So now that I'm done with the spatula, we'll give that a clean and put that away too. Adding some more alcohol to that uh, cleaning tub. And a little bit more. These are big tubs. It's for big parts. So there you go. Now I'm going to transfer the parts from the one tub to the clean alcohol. So here just making sure I shake off as much of the alcohol resin and contamination as possible before transferring them over to the clean alcohol. So all the parts are now mostly cleaned. Now we just do the final step, which is cleaning them in the clean alcohol. And uh, I've just put the, the dirty alcohol away for the moment so that I'm not gonna cause any spills or anything like that. Like I said, clean up as you go and uh, just make sure that you take your time, don't rush anything because spills and that sort of thing are potentially very dangerous. So you have to be careful. You're dealing with a very flammable liquid when you're doing this. So take your time, be careful. And now it's time to take them out of the alcohol and uh, let them dry off. So I work in a very well ventilated area. I've got ceiling extractor fans that pull air through the room. So all of these alcohol fumes, they get pulled out of the room. So it's not too much of a worry for me, but you need to be careful of that. Any kind of static discharge or static electricity can cause some nasty flames and burns. So be careful. And the final step of the processing is to lay them out ready for curing. So I'm just pulling them off the towel there and I've let them dry off so they're not wet with alcohol anymore and they're ready to go in the curing station. But before that, let's have a closer look. I want to see how good these are. Look at that. This, the detail is incredible. It's it surpassed my expectations. For my first print, I'm using Sarai Tech resins and the Piopoli Phenom. Um, I've heard so much good things about these this combination of printer and resin, but until you see it in person, it's you just it's unbelievable so I highly recommend both Piopoli printers and Sarai Tech resin And the final step in processing is to do the cure. At the moment, I'm just using the UV lights in my display cabinet until I get my curing chamber done. So there you have it. Not too difficult. If you just follow the steps, be methodical, be patient, don't rush anything, keep at it, and you'll see much better results. So hopefully this has helped you. Um, hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. That'll cover it for this episode of the Phenom Setup Series. We're going to come back in the third episode where I'll talk about some of the modifications that I've done. 
I've designed a heating system so that I can maintain a chamber temperature when I'm printing other t resins like Soriatec Blue or Soriatec Tenacious. These resins are a bit more viscous, a bit more thick, um, and you need to raise the temperature in order for them to flow correctly to get quality prints. That, among lighting and other setup stuff, I will be going into in the third episode where we talk about modifications to improve and expand the printing experience. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you're not, that's super helpful. Go check out my Patreon if you can. As always, I've been Chaos, and until next time, expect the unexpected, and I will see you guys later. And a special thank you to all my patrons that help support the channel. If you would also like to support the channel, there's a link in the description.